mention that the Great Commission, oh, here it is, the Great Commission really wasn't considered by everyday Christians until it gets into the vernacular in 1664. That's in one of the footnotes yeah. that you mentioned. And I've heard others say the same. I had a conversation, and I, this is this is bringing out kind of our, our cultural moment right now, where I had Vishal Mangawadi on the show. And Vishal took me in a direction that I was not anticipating, and we're actually preparing a response for it, because he's called it the third education revolution. And he mentioned in the moment, he said that Matthew 28, 19 through 20 was not referring to people groups. Now, you actually say that it is. He said it's referring to nation states. You actually say it's not. I'm not trying to put you against Vishal. That's not my point. My point is he mentions that we have to get back to catechesis and this education part, which I think we both would agree with. There is this catechesis idea within the family. And you mentioned the other book, Patient Ferment, and how the early church grew it wasn't necessarily by evangelistic outreach. It was by hospitality, table fellowship, the, the habitus, as you mentioned, the, firm, the, the getting into that. My question, though, is in this moment, I'm seeing the nationalist tendency to say the very foundation of Christianity in America or America, Western civilization is the Bible. This is what Vishal is saying, his book, How, to, How the Bible Made Your World. This is his concept. So we have on this one side, this Christian response that says we need to get back to this part of it because it's the very foundation upon everything in which we find freedom, justice, uh, equality, education, technology, all that stuff. And yet we have this other kingdom, which he was lambasting. He actually singled out Moody Bible Institute and Biola, he said, is the progenitors of it. He said that it focused on the otherworldly nature at the at the at the default of not educating lawyers and doctors. And he says that's why in the Supreme Court now we have Jews, we have Catholics, but we have no Protestants because we have no educational part of it. How do you? And I'm not trying to get you to respond to him, but I'm looking at our cultural moment where I see these different factors played out. One is saying we have to fight against these evil forces and we we fail to understand what we have. And the other one says, and I don't hear anybody saying this anymore, leave it be. I have people getting engaged, but I look at the global church and I go, they suffered. What, yeah. what, are we, what do we need to do here? What's the proper response and how can mission and this history help guide us in this? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I would have to say that uh, there was no concept of the modern nation state in Jesus' time. It was tribes or it was empire. And the empire controlled various tribes. Europe was tribal. Okay. There was no such thing as a nation state. And they, they were tribes and they were expanding. They were moving around. The same with that. Africa was tribal. And uh, in both of those tribal areas, Christianity grew among tribes. And often the only way it could finally grow is if eventually a prince or a king or a queen was converted. Now, that doesn't mean the whole tribe was converted. All the Celts or all of the uh, Goths, you know, were converted. A lot of them are wearing black nail polish today. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to I, I hadn't. I hadn't heard you laugh for about five minutes. I was concerned. <laughs> <laughs> But, the, but that was that was tribal. They didn't have nation states in, in uh, Jesus' time. Jesus never would have thought about that. He's thinking about the Gentiles. So the Gentiles are all his people are not Jews. And it's going to go out to all of them. And how are they identified? Most every tribe, every Gentile, every nation is identified by their totem, their god, their ancestor. Athena for Athens. Lug for the Celts. And you, you could just name, name them, you yeah. know, Baal yeah. for them, you know. So they all had their God and they all had the religion built around that. And again, that's an ideology, that's an idol, and it all tends towards violence. And now he says all the nations, which means there's one God over all, there is actually the potential for peace and not violence when you have one God over all. It's, it's an amazing thing. Nobody ever thought about it. And Chinese, the Chinese would have the, the kitchen God. They have the kitchen God's wife. They would have the God of the hearth. You know, so everybody have your little God and deity and everything split up. But now you have God ruling over all. And so ethics is universal. Everything that you do matters. Everything. But if you're in a ritualistic religion, you just got to do the rituals. And then you can do whatever you want. Treat your wife however you want to. It doesn't matter. Oh, no. If there's one God over everything, everything matters. Absolutely everything. Now, nation state, Jesus could not have imagined converting nations. There were no nations like that at that time. And he never said convert the emperor. As a matter of fact, well, render unto Caesar, you know, that's his thing kind of thing. And Paul, 
Uh, what about before Agrippa, before Felix, before, you know, in, in Acts, the last chapters of Acts? He's appearing there. He hopes that they'll come along and join the faith, but that's not his goal. His goal is to reach all of the people in every town and every village. And so Christianity, because there's one God over all, is to penetrate all levels of society and all breadth of society, all of the arts, not just the government, okay, not just the courts. We want more Christian laws rather than less Christian laws, of course. But listen, his kingdom is not of this world. OK, and so he never came to create a, a, a kingdom in this world. And whenever that happens, I ask this question. Was it good that Obama identified himself as a Christian? Was it good that George Bush, both of them, identified themselves in Christians as they bombed people in Afghanistan and Iraq? Is that what Christians do? Is it, was that a good thing? Well, it was a good thing that George W. spent more money than anybody else to help stop the spread of AIDS in Africa. And that came out of his Christian faith, I believe. But we should not ever expect the Christian nation. That kind of talk and also the talk, I, I talk about it uh, in, in the book about the talk of Jesus has to return to Israel and Israel is God's chosen people and the temple will be rebuilt. I do not think that was Jesus' intent at all. As a matter of fact, that ideology and ideology has created the decimation of Christianity in the Middle East. More Christians, Christianity has been in rapid decline since the beginning of the formation of Israel in the Middle East. And uh, that's just a fact. And that, that doesn't come from good theology. That theology really developed in the 19th century in Great Britain. So history is very important, by the way, Travis.